flatards. 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 Aren't they lovely? No, they're not. They're a bunch of f***ing lunatics. And I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> Greetings, my lovely, lovely tubadors. Welcome back to Torrens Hus, high in the mountains of Asgard, or as I have come to know it, Monmouthshire. Right. This time we're back to shouting at and about the idiots who inhabit the retards republic of Flatardia. Now, as most of the thinking world knows, and as I'm sure most of the people who watch this video will agree, the Earth is a globe, as is every observable planet in the known universe. As of this month, as of the first of this month, July 2019, there are 4,104 known planets to exist in uh, 3054 planetary systems throughout the galaxy and they have pretty much all been observed to be spherical um, so to consider that the earth is a stationary disk is actually nothing short of total idiocy considering the now almost crushing weight of evidence against flatism and even the majority of those who hold grimly to the uh, the myth and fantasy of, of biblical scripture um, have the way with all to understand that the earth is not flat and even the Pope Hello. in Rome knows it's it's a sphere so Jesus Crispies aside where do they get this idea well being as flat earth has no scientific validity um, it means that flat ads have to come to their mutual beliefs uh, in a flat earth model from a few different directions and so I think we can sort of boil it down, really, to four basic kinds, flavours, species, if you like, of, of flat art. Um, one, the religious fundamentalists. Um, and for the purposes of this video, I'm referring specifically to the Christians. I'm, I'm not a religious scholar, so I'm not, you know... I'm not clued up heavily on the opinions of other religions, but one, religious fundamentalists. Two, the conspiracy whores. Uh, three, the charlatans. I think we all know who they are. And four, the sheep. The sheep are usually the ones who will follow the religious fundamentalists or the charlatans. Now, in this episode, which will be one of, I think, four, maybe more, if I can think of something that, uh, that hasn't occurred to me yet, um, we'll be taking a look at the religious fundamentalists. And when I say taking a look, I'll be sad you're ranting about them, essentially. Um, now, these people, they have very, very strange ideas about, you know, a whole host of things. <clears throat> but they seem to have latched on to, to three particular references to the physical shape of the Earth that appear in their uh, bumper book of fairy tales. Now, those references are um, referring, to the, referring to the four corners of the Earth. Uh, another one is the plane of the Earth. And another one is where Uncle Satan takes the Jeebus man to the top of an high mountain. And from there, it shows him the whole of the Earth. Um, these religious fundamentalists, of course, take it literally. Now, as I say, I'm not a biblical scholar. Um, I prefer to have my fiction... With, um, with Stephen King, Douglas Adams, or J.R.R. Tolkien written somewhere on the cover. But I believe the first mention of this, this four corners of the earth is um, somewhere in Isaiah, where it says something along the lines of, um, gather together the, the dispersed peoples of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Now, a Christian fundamentalist taking that, uh, or any of the other misunderstood passages at face value, believing as they do that the Bible is absolutely the literal word of God, might ask themselves, 
Why then does the great floaty sky pixie not make mention of the globe? If it was a globe, surely Mr. F***ing Omnipotent would have mentioned it in his magnum opus. But there is no mention of a globe, so in their little indoctrinated minds, the Earth must indeed be as flat as a pancake. Despite <laughs> the Bible actually giving no definite reference to the shape of the world anyway within its, within its man-made myths. Well, first and foremost, the Bible is not literal. It is packed from cover to cover with metaphor, um, allegory, idiom, and to refer to the four corners of the earth, um, the plains of the earth, or Jehovah seeing the whole of the earth, is simply a way of conveying the concept of a very large area. Despite the earth having been proved beyond doubt to be a sphere by the time most of the New Testament uh, was actually being invented. Now, couple that with the difficulties of translating a very ancient language um, into a modern one, with all the difficulties of adapting cultural references to that translation, and the resulting text might be regarded, indeed, very probably would be regarded as being vastly different in meaning to the intention of the original authors. Now, secondly, the Bible was not written by God, either by his almighty hand or his omniscient influence, since God did not create anything as gods are a man-made concept. It was written um, by a disparate number of people over several centuries in several countries and in several different languages who could never have witnessed the events that they purported to represent. Um, they were simply trying to variously controlled the population through fear of eternal damnation while desperately trying to explain the mechanisms of the natural world uh, through the eyes of you know pre-scientific man and the best way that they could come up with any sort of explanation of what was going on around them was by inventing a magical sky goblin which for them could conveniently explain everything from sunrise to birdsong and upon whom they could lay the responsibility for you know disease and crop failure but it also appears to have escaped the minds of the scripture toting howler monkeys that if the earth is a flat disc as they believe it to be as they think the bible tells them it is it still wouldn't have any corners as a disc think about it has uh, an infinitely linear circumference so no corners there um, the other favorite of these myth mongers is that desperately ambiguous phrase the plane of the earth now this should actually be self-explanatory to anyone with even the slightest grasp on relative sizes um, since we as individuals are unbelievably small in comparison to the size of the planet we are currently in the, the process of destroying so let's go back to the time of uh, you know the, the biblical Middle East okay so you happen to be um, a goat herder wandering around some Middle Eastern desert sometime before the advent of an enlightenment you might well have thought then that the earth was flat but it's more likely that you wouldn't have even considered the appearance of the sum total of the ground you were walking on let alone its physical structure um, also your concept of distances would have been very different to that of most people in today's modern world um, you might have con considered it a long way to the market uh, or a bit of a trek from from babylon to that mental party you've been invited to in gomorrah um, a simple basket weaver might think it was something of uh, an incredibly long haul from the coast of Macedonia to the Isle of Britannia. All right. But the idea of viewing the world from several hundreds of thousands of miles away would f most likely be a completely alien concept. Now, even if they ever considered elevating themselves above the surface of the planet, they would have thought it impossible to get very far since um, A only birds can fly and just in case anybody wants to comment bats can fly in the bible bats were thought to be birds um b the bible tells them that there is a magical crystal dome barrier over the earth called the firmament they would have thought that there was only so far that you might be able to go before reaching said firmament uh, and then you could go no farther they would have believed this utterly 
They would not have questioned it since it was written in a magical book, um, a book that actually promotes itself as being the word of God. So as I've said before, self-recommendation is no recommendation at all. Um, and that magical book, which the priests would have insisted must be absolute truth. And if you didn't believe in it, you would go to hell for all eternity and boil in a sea of flaming sulfur. Now, your illiterate little mind of the time, um, no, that's unfair. They didn't have little minds. They were just uneducated. People back then were just as clever as people are now. It's just that they hadn't discovered as much. So your illiterate mind wouldn't question the educated and all-powerful priesthood. Uh, so it would be a huge bonus not to be heavily brazed on this satanic barbecue while simultaneously being buggered by giggling demons. It was simply much easier to accept what you were being told. So with the lives of these people being entirely governed by the religious beliefs of whichever superstitious fear cults they were born into, very few people in the general population would have been brave enough to question it, let alone conduct any kind of of early science and so remained uh, locked into a cycle of superstitious dread and endless subservience to a god that didn't and still doesn't exist. In fact they would have been more concerned with the daily battle of feeding themselves and their families, um, preventing their cattle from becoming dinner for any of several species of carnivore and avoiding being hacked to pieces by whichever unfriendly horde was intent on removing your testicles in any given week. Um, what to me is truly amazing is that this kind of unquestioning belief in floaty sky sprites and pre-medieval fear-mongering still endures today despite almost a universal level of literacy and education in the Western world. Um, observations of the Earth and its place within the universe um, advances in every scientific discipline, um, the natural world and the universe around us being more transparent to us than it has ever been since the emergence of civilization, and yet your fundamentalist Bible yelper falls flat on their face because their superstitious adherence to this mindless nonsense forbids them to consider that perhaps scientific progress has revealed their book of spells to be nothing more than a fear-driven fairy tale of bullshit and dogma. Um, they continue to elevate this book um, that has its origins in prehistoric tribalism above the scientific endeavours and reveal truths that have been presented to us by some of the finest minds that have ever lived, simply because they lack the, the mental fortitude to realise that their own idiotic enslavement to a system that not only shouldn't exist in the model age, but shouldn't be allowed to exist at all. It's unfortunate that faith does not require proof. So the fact that there is no proof of the existence of any deity is no burden to the fundamentalist God botherer. Um, as their religious tomes tell them that those who question God's word and deny scripture must be in league with Satan, anyone who did voice an opinion and anyone who does even today amongst the, fen the fundamentalists voice an opinion contrary to scripture will soon find themselves in receipt um, of well back then certainly a death sentence um, today vilification um, possibly even extradition from their own communities so within those communities they could then preserve the single-minded status quo of the general population. And that, dear viewers, is why it is impossible, pretty much impossible, to win an argument with a religious flat earther. Maybe one day they learn, maybe one day they won't. I don't know. As I've said, I'm not only surprised that this nonsense goes on today, it surprises me that it's allowed to go on. It causes so many problems in the world, this devout adherence to nonsense, superstition, potent fantasy, and just idle myth-making. It really is a wonder to me, it truly is. In the next episode, we'll address the conspiracy whores, uh, those equally mindless individuals who will believe anything, regardless of how utterly ludicrous it is, provided it sits counter to anything that they consider to be mainstream. If you've made it this far, then thank you, as always, for watching. Thank you to all those who've recently subscribed to the channel. Um, it's growing. 
So I have you lot to thank for that. Thank you very much indeed. If you would consider subscribing, I would be very much appreciative. If you're not already subscribed, give that be uh, that little subscribe um, subscribe button a little click. Um, it should be where somewhere down here at the moment. In a, in another moment, little four will pop up here. Click on him. He'll make sure you know when the next video is coming out. Um, click the bell notification, and then YouTube will send you an email on my behalf so you can come and look once again at my inane and flustered ranting so as always thank you for watching please be safe be good to each other and until next time heil bauer